I uh, am one of the original co-sponsors. I do feel strongly about the investment infrastructure throughout the country in America and also in West Virginia. I feel strongly that, uh, that uh, I felt strong enough that, that I put my name to co-sponsor this piece of legislation as one of the lead co-sponsors. I will work hard uh, to do everything I can to get both sides working together. And I don't know if a Democrat or Republican, wherever they come from, whoever they represent, whatever state they're from, that doesn't have infrastructure needs. $50 billion of the recommendation from the President will go towards roads, bridges, uh, water, sewer, air traffic updates. $10 billion will go to a national infrastructure bank. Uh, I can, you know, we can uh, relate to the infrastructure bank in West Virginia because we have an infrastructure council. We started out with, I think, $300 million. We knew that we had billion dollars of need. But with that, we had a revolving. So we could borrow from it, but you had to pay it back. So we can continue. This is the same type of a structure, the same premise is being promoted. Um, so I'm very, very uh, supportive of that. Uh, we will be introducing, uh, I'll be introducing uh, uh, as one of the major co-sponsors as soon as we get back October 31st from our work period. That bill will be introduced. And I'm hopeful that we can get bipartisan, and I hope it will be sponsored, co-sponsored by bipartisan, and it will be voted upon. We have proven that we can work in a bipartisan manner on certain issues. Uh, the big breakdown now is the money. Uh, they're going to say, okay, uh, Senator Manchin, uh, you're now going to co-sponsor $60 billion spending of infrastructure. I call that an investment. But still yet, it has to have an offset. How are you going to pay for it? First of all, the way that my side of the aisle, the leadership from my side of the party, the Democrat Party, wants a seven-tenths of one percent tax on the millionaire billionaires. I'm fine with that. Does that fix the problem? No. Will it pass with that provision? No. So I'm hoping that if we can bring people to the table to do meaningful tax reform, meaningful tax reform has long reaching. Make people pay their fair share. The millionaires, the billionaires, the people that are escaping it because of loopholes and offsets and tax credits, clean the mess up and we'll have the, the, the flow that we need. But then what happens is the people that have the means that we look at and might be getting some perks or the privileges because they do have the means to, to hire the best accountants or best, uh, uh, the best uh, lawyers, and they're, and they're doing so within the letter of the law. We just need to change the law. If that's the case, then let's make sure, and those people are telling me, I'm more than happy to pay my fair share. I says, God bless you. They said, but we're concerned about how they're going to spend it in Washington. Well, we could all commit ourselves to debt and maybe infrastructure. So much go to debt, so much go to infrastructure is a very common sense, reasonable approach. You're not growing government, not feeding the beast, as, as, they, will, as they will say, but responsibly paying down so much towards debt and the other investing in our infrastructure. And I'll guarantee you, every job that we create by investing in infrastructure is a job here that American will be performing. Hopefully a West Virginia. It stays, the money stays locally in the economy. We know it works. It worked during President Roosevelt's term when he was pulling us out of the depths of the Great Depression. It worked during President Eisenhower's term when he was basically out of, after the Korean War pulling us uh, and building the uh, interstate highway. So we know that works and we think it can work again.